Hello, everybody. I am Jake, a.k.a. Bomber, and I welcome you into Jobber Radio's monthly deathmatch rundown. this video, I'm going to be sharing with you several different things that took place in April 2023 inside the deathmatch world of professional wrestling. I'm talking anything from five must-see deathmatches that you better not skip over to special happenings in the scene that took place. We had some tournament action that I'm going to break down so you don't miss a single thing. And when it comes to those deathmatch championships, I have you covered in recapping each and every title match of the month. Now let's get started with the Jesus Christ spot of the month. Back to back months now, we find ourselves in XPW for yet another viral moment. This one, however, made it to TMZ. At XPW's California 2 event, we saw Masada make it to the finals of the King of the Deathmatch tournament, taking on Arrow Boy, Drake Younger, and Shane Mercer. Midway through this match, Masada went to the back and came walking back out, carrying a burning torch and a water bottle filled with some flammable substance. He first spit a fireball into the face of Drake and everything was fine there. Drake took off, no issues. But then Masada went to do the same to Shane Mercer, but his fireball was massive and apparently the liquid dripped down onto his face and it lit him completely ablaze. As you can see, the flames right there were not small at all. This engulfed his entire upper body. This kind of reminded me of that scene from Swamp Thing where he got set on fire. Well, obviously this was not as intense as that, but either way, it was wild to see. Masada walked around the ring, patted himself down, and eventually the flames did go out. And of course, that is right when the fire extinguisher finally arrived. Why it wasn't ready before that, I mean, who knows. But either way, like I said, this made it on a TMZ, and you can see from these photos that he had second-degree burns on his chest, his neck, his face, and he just absolutely looked miserable here. Despite his thumbs up, of course. So yeah, there you have it, folks. Really scary stuff here. But a burning Masada is this month's Jesus Christ Spot of the Month. Now on to some deathmatch wrestling news. I'm going to try to speed through these because we got a lot going on in this episode. So first of all, ICW No Holds Barred as well as Rise Underground may be getting sued. I say maybe, but it definitely says right here, legal action has been taken by someone who attended ICW and Rise Weekender in February, alleging a failure to provide adequate warning of risks associated with attending. So yeah, ICW and Rise put out this statement that said basically they're being sued over what happened in February during their tour and they will not be doing the tour again in May like they planned on doing. Luckily though, if you want to go to those shows, they said they have moved the dates back to December 1st and 2nd, so at least they're coming back at some point. This is an actual bizarre allegation here. I mean, it says right here, it's important to note that the person pursuing legal action has attended numerous deathmatch shows before. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of people have, you know, talked about this already on social media, but for those that haven't seen it, can you imagine going to a deathmatch show several times? I mean, bottom line, it's not like, oh, I didn't know it was happening. That's that's not the case at all. Obviously, it's somebody that just wants to cash in on something. That's I mean, that's obviously that's all this possibly could be. Nobody is that wild, right? But the moral of this story is it sucks for Rise. It sucks for ICW No Holds Barred. They cannot continue the tour next month in May, but hopefully we get an early Christmas present, early December for the G.O.D., the Games of Death Tournament weekend. So I'm looking forward to that at least. I want to bring up that Tara Calloway will be retiring from in-ring action anyway. She still owns Dropkick Depression, and she was a wrestler for H2O and several other companies. To start off the interspecies wrestling show Boner Jam 5, she came out right in front of the crowd and she pretty much just announced her retirement. And she pretty much said she just needs to catch up with all of the injuries she's been taking over the years. So it's just time to step away from in-ring action for now. But in this tweet, she did say she's still going to be around. She has a promotion to run, a husband to support. She has wrestle kids to help and women to protect. So there you go. So Tara Calloway stepping away from in-ring action in the deathmatch scene. And we just hope nothing but the best for her. And by the way, by the way, two R's, one L. Spell the name right. For the last piece of news, if you haven't seen already, GCW has announced some of their Deathmatch Hall of Fame inductees that are going in this year in June. So first one is John Zandig, the dude right there. I mean, what else can be said? The dude has pioneered so much, so much that is going on right now. You see so many people doing the Zandig, you know, pose. 
it, it's it's obvious. I don't know how he wasn't the very first Hall of Famer, to be honest with you. But either way, Zandig is going in this year, so better late than never, am I right? Low Life Louis is inductee number two, and he's been around forever, like the late 90s. And he's still going strong. He's still He's been wrestling for four different companies, I think, uh, this year alone already, and we're only in April, so still going strong. We're going to see how much longer it goes, but either way, he is going into the Deathmatch Hall of Fame for GCW 2023. I'm not going to lie, this one is really important and special to me. I grew up on CZW. Um, I know Brain Damage has done a lot of stuff in other companies, but I was introduced to him in CZW. He was one of my favorites for a very, very long time. Um, it's unfortunate that he is not here with us today to accept this, but uh, brain damage um, going into the Deathmatch Hall of Fame 2023. Very well deserved. One of the most intense Deathmatch wrestlers that you will ever see. If you never got to see brain damage, you need to go back and watch some of his stuff because the dude was ungodly. So as of this recording, this is the last and the fourth member into the Hall of Fame. There may be more, but either way, Piss Jug Mike is the first fan inducted into the GCW Deathmatch Hall of Fame. And... Uh, we've we've brought him up uh, recently on the show and nothing but love to his family, his friends, and hopefully they have a great show in June for Piss Jug Mike. It is tournament time and there are two different deathmatch tournaments that took place this month, but one of them has not aired yet. So the Wrestle Rave Death Triad 2 that is sponsored by Jabba Radio. So I will show that on the next episode as long as it airs, uh, you know, the May episode that is. But the only one we have for this episode is the XPW King of the Death Match Tournament 2023. Let's get into it. It's very long. Warning. And I'm probably going to talk about how long it is throughout the review. So just know it's long. Okay, so let's get into the death matches. XPW's California 2 event was once again host of the King of the Death Match Tournament. And just like last year's show, this was very long. I am talking six hours plus long. So with a lot of matches to cover, let's run through this entire tournament. So kicking off the tournament with the first match, we saw Shane Mercer beat the big man Terex. In the very first spot of this match, Mercer whipped Terex into the doors with light tubes on it and cut his arm up very badly. With blood pouring all over the ground, Mercer had to show off his strength early, hitting an FU through a barbed wire board to pick up the win. With this bad of a cut, the match was obviously rushed, barely lasting only four minutes long. Then next up, we had Dirty Ron, who lost immediately to Drake Younger because of another really bad cut. This one he had on his hand. So two matches in, two bad cuts, ending the matches early. That is not a good sign. And this match was a best two out of three log cabin light tubes match, where you could see Drake quickly moving around to end the match as quickly as possible, barely lasting about five minutes. For the third match, Arrow Boy took on the body in a match featuring a ton of short ladders for some reason. These two had a pretty solid match, seeing a nice frog splash finish through a table and light tubes onto the body with Arrow Boy getting the win and moving on. In the fourth match of the opening round, Eric Ryan took on Lou Dark Titan in a match that started out really good. It really did. But after watching the finish several times in a row, I still can't tell what the hell happened. I assume it was supposed to be some type of angle where Becky Hate came out to attack Ludark, but Becky and Eric kind of shove Ludark back and forth a couple times, and then Becky just walks out of the ring, leaving Eric to pin her without anything really happening to her. She even got her shoulder up before the three count, but referee Manny was in on it too, I guess. I don't know. This was just a very odd finish that soured the match big time. So Becky Hate came back out for the next match of the round, but since Orin Veidt couldn't make the show, the body had to pull double duty and enter the tournament, this time as a woman, to take on Becky. Then we had Cat Martini come out to distract Becky, allowing the body to hit two DVDs through light tubes to score the win. I know this is all sounding a little convoluted. I'm just telling you what happened. So after that, Big F and Joe took on JD Horror, who was coming out of retirement to enter the tournament. These guys brawled all around the two rings using light tubes and guardrails and pretty much anything else they could get their hands on. Joe picked up the win after a running senton onto a light tube bundle laid across the chest of JD Horror. Next, the XPW world champion Masada faced Judge Joe Dredd. And I believe this would go on to be the best match in the opening round. 
Masada beat the brakes off of Dread here. He destroyed chairs over his head. He tore him up with barbed wire. He cracked him with whatever the hell this is. He hit a leaping elbow to the outside through a table, which you don't see Masada do too much. Cinder blocks were even used here. This match was just overall solid. The end came after shoving skewers into Dread's head, and then he gave him a big knee to finish him off. In the last match of the opening round, Hardcore Hillbilly went one-on-one -on -one against UK's Lou Nixon. That's right, we got the MAGA USA versus the UK here. I'm gonna tell you right now, I did not expect to see Hardcore Hillbilly try to fly, but when he did, of course it ended with a crash in a burn. Nixon had to drive three Kensons into Hillbilly's head, smash him with a chair, and then kick light tubes into his face and continue after that to pummel him until the MAGA referee, Manny Ramirez, had to stop the match before his man was killed. On to round number two now, Shane Mercer faced the body in an absolute wild match. The big highlight from this match here was when Mercer chucked the body from one ring all the way to the other. Obviously, that wouldn't be the end of the match though, because Mercer would dish out a little more punishment before finally hitting his trademark, Moonsault follow a slam to eventually pick up that win. Mercer moves on to the finals in impressive fashion. Then we had what may have been the match of the tournament, Eric Ryan versus Drake Younger for the first time ever. Much like Drake's other matches, things start off a little slow with straight up mat wrestling before progressing up to ultra violence. We also had Eric Ryan's trademark terracotta pot added into the mix. Overall, very good match here that saw Eric Ryan eat a brutal looking Drake's landing to put him out of the tournament. And the hits just kept coming because up next, we got Big F and Joe taking on Arrow Boy. These two had a really fun death match here, which saw some new and innovative spots. In what I think was a mild upset for the crowd, Arrow Boy put Joe through a door to score the three count victory, moving on to the finals to start this little Cinderella run. These two really did battle all around the arena. And I think this match deserves your attention, just like the entire second round here. So we're up to the last match in the second round. Lou Nixon took on Masada. Nixon brought his brutal kicks to the table and actually dished out more punishment than we're used to seeing Masada take. I'm sure this match also featured more submission moves than people expected. And you know what? In death matches, I enjoy that. The end did come, though, for Nixon when Masada powerbombed him onto the barbed wire ropes to pick up the three count. So finally, we have made it to the finals after six hours of action in a fatal four-way match. Arrow Boy, Shane Mercer, Drake Younger, and Masada went to battle. These guys beat the holy hell out of one another to see who would leave the 2023 King of the Deathmatch Tournament winner. There was a lot of good stuff that did happen in this match, but I think most of it is overshadowed by the whole Masada fire spot. But from start to finish, like I said, I do believe this was a good finals match. And you know what? Speaking of that fire spot, after suffering second degree burns, the dude stayed out there and finished the match. Absolutely insane. During the finals, the guardrails were completely wiped out. The air was cloudy from plumes of light tube dust. A man was burned alive. Arrowboy almost completed the Cinderella story that was being told, but that was kind of cut short when Mercer military pressed him out onto Masada through a table. And when Mercer went for his fall away slam onto Drake, Drake countered it with a pin attempt and landed the three count match over tournament over. We have our winner after already starting out with a great year of matches. Drake Younger takes home the XPW King of the Deathmatch trophy or maybe not more on the trophy later on in the Deathmatch title segment of the episode. But that has been your extremely long recap to an extremely long tournament. The King of the Deathmatch tournament 2023. Now we're going on to the deathmatch title matches of the month, and I wish we could add one more because we have four to cover today. I wish we could add the Wrestle Rave Deathmatch Championship, but it was defended in CCW, Crimson Crown Wrestling, at their Violent World show, and there's just no footage of it, so I can't show it. Uh, so, you know, that sucks. Nothing I can do, but just know Dr. Redacted is still the champion um, as of right now of this recording. So there you go. So anyway, let's get into the title matches. There's a couple of them. So let's get into them. Let's start things off with the ICW American Deathmatch World Championship. At ICW No Holds Barred Volume 45 show, the now full-blown heel Brandon Kirk showed up wearing some 
all white cult-like outfit. Meanwhile, the challenger Hoodfoot showed up with the entire crowd supporting him that never let up through the entire match. And that's a good thing because early on in this match, Hoodfoot took a ton of damage with Brandon completely controlling the match. He even took a bad fall through what had to be maybe two dozen, three dozen light tubes. Eventually, Brandon had Hoodfoot pinned down right where he wanted him, and he called for Casey to hand him the same knife that he held to Hoodfoot's throat last month. And then straight out of a horror movie, Cruel emerged from the back, grabbing Casey, who may be the next pro wrestling scream queen. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Dude, this is fucking... And there she went. With the distraction, Hoodfoot grabbed the knife, threatening to use it on Kirk, but took a low blow instead. Brandon snatched up the knife again and held it up to Hoodfoot's throat, forcing the ref to call the match before things got out of hand. Well, so we thought. With the fans thinking that Kirk snuck away with the win yet again, they started chucking a bunch of trash into the ring, completely pissed off. That was until Danny DeMonto came out and restarted the match, which happens to be the exact opposite of what happened last month to Neil Diamond Cutter. Referee Shiny Shoes drilled Brandon in the face with light tubes, and then Hoodfoot quickly hit the psycho driver, fuck your life, onto the champ, picking up the win, becoming the new ICW American Deathmatch World Champion. The crowd absolutely loved it. Everyone came out from the back. It really did have this special moment feel. But there you have it, your new champion, Hoodfoot Mo Atlas. Now the very next night at RPW Street Trash Show, Hoodfoot was already scheduled to take on John Wade Murdoch, so why not make it for his newly won title? Hoodfoot rocked the referee shirt in this match in support of his fallen friend, referee SPO. As expected, this match was so damn good. We saw several different smaller panes of glass used as compared to the larger sizes that we normally see, so it was a little different change of pace. I will go into detail more on this match later in the episode, but even with his flesh dangling from his arm, Hoodfoot continued and scored the win via pinfall victory after multiple backdrop drivers. With the first successful title defense under his belt, we have now fully entered the deathmatch title reign of Hoodfoot. For the next deathmatch title we're going to cover here, we are staying with RPW to talk about the RPW Rust Belt Championship match between the champion Randy West, who has held this title for well over a year now, taking on the challenger Danny DeMonto. Now, this match was originally scheduled to be Randy West versus Casey Kirk, but it looked like Casey Kirk had her nose broken, at least busted very badly the night before against Lufisto. So Danny stepped in as her replacement. And just like her good friend Hoodfoot, Randy was also seen repping the ref shirt in support of SPO on this night. Oh, and speaking of SPO, things actually started out here with Danny and Randy sharing a blunt with an empty chair meant to be for him nearby. As we got into the action, though, a majority of this match saw outside of the ring brawling where they used gusset plates, light tubes, exploding baseball bats. They even broke some fan's chair. And then for one second, it looked like we were about to get a new champion after the DeMonto driver onto Randy, but she got her shoulder up after a cocky pin attempt. She would be able to ram her head into his groin. Yep, that that's what happened several times to counter a second DeMonto driver, and then she followed it up with a backdrop driver through the chairs for the three count. So the epic title reign continues for Randy West as she leaves Street Trash, still your RPW Rust Belt Champion. Next up, we are heading back over to XPW to the King of the Deathmatch tournament where Drake Younger won. Well, he won the trophy, not the title, because Schlack is the champion, and he came out immediately during the ceremony, told Drake that this tournament was never for the trophy. It was all about his title. And then he proceeded to destroy the trophy right there in front of Drake. So yeah, after winning three death matches in one night, Drake's prize was really a title match against XPW's King of the Deathmatch champion, Schlack. This match would also be a ladder match with a title being suspended up above one of the two rings. They immediately started fighting out into the crowd where Schlack caught Drake coming off of some tables and just slammed him down onto some nearby chairs. As soon as they got back into the ringside area, it looked like Drake took some tubes directly into the face. Actually, it kind of looked like there were several reckless looking light tubes being thrown around in this thing. Drake would set up a couple tables in the second ring with a pane of glass on top. That's when Schlack would eventually make his way up to the top of the ladder, retrieve his title to win the match, 
But as he did, Drake shoved the ladder over, sending Schlack crashing down through the tables on the other ring. That was without a doubt an awesome visual, and Schlack gets the win, retaining his title. But sadly, other than some light tube shots and the big fall from the ladder, there wasn't a whole lot here. I mean, you may want to take into consideration this was Drake's fourth death match of the night, and this was right at the seven hour mark of the show. So yeah, it is what it is. Heading over to Horror Slam now, we have a triple threat match for the Horror Slam Death Match Championship. This match took place at the death of the Easter Bunny Show. And first of all, I want to say thank you to Nicole Schlazinski. I think that's how you pronounce that. Not sure. Uh, either way, for this HD footage from this match. The Purge's Sean Tyler was the first man to the ring to take on the former Horror Slam Deathmatch champion DBA and the current champion Satu Jin. Despite being double teamed right at the start of this match, Jin took control, slamming both of his opponents through a door and a barbed wire board. There were lots of light tubes used in this match here, including several different headshots, including this slam on the ring apron right here. And then at one point, Jin nearly unloads an entire box of light tubes onto the head and back of Sean Tyler. Later on, after burying his opponents in chairs, DBA went to do a dive on top of his opponents, but they both moved out of the way and it looked like he almost broke his back in the process. Once back into the ring, we saw Jin hit a falcon arrow on Tyler, but the count was broken up by DBA, who hit a Russian leg sweep, followed by this senton onto some tubes. But it wasn't enough to get the win, though. The end did come when Satu Jin found himself on the ring apron where DBA threw Tyler into him, sending Jin falling out onto some light tube boards onto the floor. With Jin now out of the mix, DBA lit his elbow on fire, driving it down into the heart of Sean Tyler to pick up the victory. There you have it, DBA is your new Horror Slam Deathmatch Champion and will now begin his second reign. As for Satu Jin, his title run comes to an end at 84 days with sadly only one successful title defense. All right, now we are gonna get into the five must-see matches of the month, and I wish I could show you more variety here, but there were two shows in particular that had just so many good matches. You'll see as we get into them. But, hey, it is what it is. I just I just lay it out, and whatever makes it, makes the cut. So, you know, no bias, no favoritism. Let's get into the five must-see matches of April 2023. The first must-see match from the month of April is going to be that ICW American Deathmatch Championship match between Hoodfoot and John Wade Murdoch at RPW's Street Trash Show. The match started off with Murdoch trying to get the better of Hoodfoot, but he proved his power would be too much. As I mentioned in the other segment, these guys used panes of glass in unique ways that was just refreshing. One spot that looked particularly scary was when Hoodfoot's head was up against this pane of glass and Murdoch brought his knee down onto his head, smashing that glass. Then in this simple move here, Hoodfoot had a chunk of his arm ripped up or at least his skin was torn. Yeah, you could see it really good here flopping around after the suplex. They also used razor boards and doors in devastating fashion as well. These two have been on another level this year, and with this being their seventh matchup against each other, you can tell they've built up quite the chemistry. And in case you were curious, yes, they are tied at three wins apiece against each other, with that other match being another person that won. Because here, Hoodfoot picked up the win after two backdrop drivers making his first successful title defense. This was easily one of my favorite matches of the month, and I highly suggest you seek it out if you haven't already. Now let's head over to ICW, the one in Milwaukee, not the one in the chains, to an ICW world title match between the champion, Eric Dillinger, and the challenger, Orn Veidt. This match would take place on the first night of the 420 Classic. We had a fun main event in store between these two. Oddly enough, I loved how Veidt jaw jacked with the crowd almost all the way through this match. Now there was back and forth in this match, but for the majority, the challenger had the champion on the ropes. And he also slammed him down on some inverted chairs that looked a little scary. He would also give the champ an assault driver through a pane of glass and then stapled all of the fans' cash onto his body. Dillinger did get to showcase some of his high-flying ability too as he fought back from behind. This was a pretty long match here. It almost hit that 20-minute mark, and I'm telling you right now, it just flies right by. Without a doubt, this was my favorite hybrid death match of the month, meaning like it showcases several different styles all in this one match. The show is on IWTV right now, so go give this one a watch. So now we are headed to the chains for ICW 
No Holds Barred Volume 45 show for a death match, dream match between Lufisto and Casey Kirk. It was good to see Casey started things out classy, of course, but little did she know it would cost her big by the end of this thing. With Lufisto being out of the deathmatch game for quite a while now, you can clearly see she hasn't missed a step. We saw some rough light tube shots in this one, followed by some good brawling around the ringside area, out and among the fans. Things were looking good for Kirk, that is, until she made her way back into the ring because a single headbutt to the face changed everything. It was right here where it looked like Casey had her nose broken. Did she stop the match or wrap it up early? Of course not. She would go on to put Lufisto through a pane of glass head first, but when she tried climbing to her perch to hit her 187, Lufisto caught her midway to spoil her plans. She would bring Casey crashing down through some light tubes with a fisherman's suplex, but Casey would just not stay down. Then right on cue, here comes Brandon Kirk when he ran down to throw powder into the eyes of Lufisto, allowing Casey to roll her up from behind to steal that victory. So with a possible broken nose and all, the Kirk strike again. Sticking with ICW no holds barred, there was another match that requires your attention. That would be Boss Battle 3. The H2O boss Matt Tremont versus ICW No Holds Barred's boss Danny DeMonto. This was the rubber match to determine who the top boss was inside the deathmatch scene. Well, in the ring at least. And let me tell you right now, these two did not hold back either. Gusset plates and headbutting light tubes got that blood flowing very early. But there was one moment in particular where things got dialed up to 11. After DeMonto drilled Tremont with a chair, he shouted, Take a fucking walk, champ, and then this happened. Tremont completely snapped, and it looked like he had Danny running for his life around the ring. The crowd could feel the explosion within Tremont, and they all started going absolutely nuts. And from that point on, each hit seemed to be a little stiffer and a little stiffer. I do hate how the ending did get messed up, well, at least initially, where they stood up on the chairs and they gave out underneath their weight, and it looked like Tremont actually tweaked his knee. But HO's boss recovered and sent Danny DeMonto through a light tube door with a sick looking DVD to finish him off. This was a fiery match here between these two, and I loved how the intensity just kept ramping up throughout the entire process. But last but certainly not least, we have the main event at RPW Street Trash Show between Dr. Redacted and Matt Tremont. With the murder doctor rising up the ranks in the deathmatch world, this would be a big test to see if he could hang with the top dogs. Redacted jump-started this thing with a flying kick to the outside, but I'm not sure it paid off the way he wanted to because he busted himself open on the floor and he may have even got concussed. And speaking of busted open, by the midway point through this match, Dr. Redacted was damn near bleeding buckets. Despite taking an absolute beating in this match, Doc did get some offense in, including some tube shots and his double stomp from the top rope. But it was his trash can dive that really cost him, and the chair too apparently. Now, Tremont was so fired up in this match that he smashed an entire row of light tubes over his own head. Other than that, though, I saw this match as Tremont testing Redacted's limits. He whipped them all around the ring, into light tubes, into the Tokyo Towers that they had set up, even into panes of glass, and he almost caused Redacted to impale himself on a freaking chair. Then to end the misery, Tremont hit three brutal looking power bombs with the last one being through a light tube bundle. The pinfall was countered and Tremont landed the win, but Dr. Redacted showed that he could take all of the punishment that Tremont was willing to dish out. All in all, this was just an insane main event. So there you have it guys, the five must see matches that you need to go watch if you haven't already for April, 2023. Now, uh, there are so many different you know shows that I would love to cover. I would love to cover cover the new fear city i would love to cover circle sixes shows but again none of that stuff is aired i'm not you know leaving anybody out anywhere on any you know reason it, besides you can't see the footage you can't see the actual shows yet um they will be releasing their stuff and when they do we'll talk about it but i don't want anybody to ever think these episodes are you know leaving people out on purpose or anything like that i want to cover anything and everything so anybody out there watching if you think I miss if I miss something let me know if I'm missing a company I need to talk about please let me know down below hit me up on Twitter at jobber radio and we'll cover it this is about just covering everything deathmatch wrestling that's what I'm trying to do here 
So hoping we're getting close doing that. But that is going to be the end of the episode here. Please stick around because we have that final montage at the end of different things that happen throughout the month. So in the meantime, follow Jabba Radio at Jabba Radio. Please subscribe here on YouTube. And why don't you just go support Deathmatch Wrestling, support independent wrestling, IWTV, Fight TV, Premier Network, all of that stuff. Please go subscribe. AWR streams on their own website. You can go to streamxpw.com if you want to. The main thing is don't be a dick. Don't be a pirate. Pay the ones that do what we all love. That's it, everybody. See you next month. Every bit of shit. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus fuck! <laughs>